everybody, welcome to episode 6 of We're Not Dead. I am Captain Jack, and this is FTB Infinity Evolved, or something like that. And this is my base, as you know, if you've been paying attention and if you've been watching. So, quick overview of what happened between this episode and the last episode. Lasers are set up. The yellow, because I have them drilling for Elorium. Um, four turbines running, 28k RF per tick. We're about to put that to shame. Um, they each have an excess of 8,000 um, because they're running four laser drills. One of them's like buried in the earth because I just wanted it. Um, so this is netting me a uh, gain of Elorium, so that's good. I did not need to build the reactor downstairs any bigger. It can power these just fine. It could actually power a fifth just fine. Um, the, waste, the waste is about one um, bucket um, per tick or something like that. Just 1.000, something like that. Okay, so that's that. Um, so in this episode, I am going to mainly be dealing with the Draconic Evolution Reactor. Um, some uh, aesthetic stuff has happened, a um, bunch actually, and I will continue to add as I see fit um, because details are wonderful. Um, this is very much different. Um, this is that jumbled up wire filled crafting area um, that was uh, my main terminal here. I moved everything around, I pushed this back a little bit, um, got my little grids here. This, uh, I was crafting something, but I'm not anymore. Okay, um, thanks to P2P tunnels, I was able to clean all this up. Um, so my controller is now at the back. Um, and yes, everything is wired in. Um, here's all the tunnels, yada, yada, yada. Not going into that. That's fantastic. Actually, um, if we ever release episode four of uh, Applied Energistics, oops, excuse me, gets into P2P tunnels and stuff like that. So if you don't know how to use that, that will be fantastic. Um, Oops. See, I don't know where my doors are. They're all hidden. Um, oop. Here they are. Okay. So I also added um, a second crafting rig, rig over here and a third on the other side. So I have a total of four. That's because I was running out of pattern space. And that wasn't good. Um, back here, this is just where I put um, my... The Elorium thing, my inputs, um, all of my ores that are coming in from my mining laser, which are um, excessive. Um, you can see here, this is what's happening. This, just, I'm not even doing anything with this. It's all, I don't need any of it, um, so I'm not bothering to um, smelt it up or anything. But yeah, a lot of cool stuff here coming up in there. Um, got a bunch of cobalt. Um, I believe there's ardite somewhere here. There's ardite, um, so on and so forth. A uh, bunch of iridium, which is pretty cool. Let me see. I thought I actually had that all. I don't know, smell. Yeah, 500 iridium ingots. So, um, yeah. So all of my mining's being done. Um, everything's renewable. Don't have to worry about anything. We'll never lose power. Um, up here, a little bit of uh, changes. Little changes made here. Um, more carpenter blocks. Box everything up. Facades, you name it. So on and so forth. Kind of make made it look a little bit better. Um, up here, nothing really happened. Um, I took out a lot of my bees because I was getting just an absolutely excessive amount of some of these resources. Like, I'm never going to use 137,000 inner pearls or shiny ingots or so on and so forth. Um, so I took them all out and I made them produce uh, Eulorium combs. Even though I didn't need to, but whatever. I was, like, saving power. Or I thought I was saving power for for no good reason at all because I have too much and I'm about to have an excess of it. So up here in... Uh, this thing I'm up to um, half a trillion almost, uh, 429 billion, and that's uh, creeping steadily upwards. So this is, these have been running for a while. And uh, in this episode, um, which may or may not be the last episode, um, because there may not be anything left in my base when I'm through here, um, this is the episode where I am going to build the Draconic Evolution Reactor. Um, I may end up eating my words, um, but... From what I've found, these are far safer than most people think, if you do it properly, okay? And I believe I have done it properly. So, this setup, which I will really not go into very much, is a computer craft program, the Link, 
um, and tutorial basically it's a written tutorial but if I figured it out you can um, on how to actually set up this program will be in the description so that's where you can find that um, thank you to its creator um, so what's going on here um, I'm gonna discuss kind of the basic here's my program um, the basic concept of how this works I also move the input and outputs um, to be close to each other here <clears throat> okay so the reactor has two main elements. The first one is fuel, which is awakened draconium. And the second one is not actually a tangible thing, um, but it is called chaos. And chaos is this black stuff here in the middle. So it's all chaos right now, no fuel. Um, and chaos, that's just because you need um, the chaos. OK. I don't even know what happened to them, but I swear I had chaos crystals. Um, I don't think I used them all to make this. I only think it needed like one, but whatever. Um, so yeah, so there's fuel and then there's chaos. And um, I'll tell you how that works in just one second. So the stabilizers basically keep the containment field um, happy. And actually, when I make a tutorial on this, I'll go into depth about it because I definitely will make a tutorial. Um, let me just peek inside of here one more time. Um, so I've set it up right because it doesn't say invalid status. Um, the temperature temperature really can't exceed 8,000 degrees. Um, otherwise, you're going to have some serious problems and you're going to blow up. Um, the containment field strength, um, that's, um, bu -bu -bu, that's, I think, when you're inputting power, this will maintain that. Um, energy saturation, that has an effect on how much you're pumping out of the reactor. So how much is leaving has that effect. Fuel conversion is just whatever. That's just the use, which is whatever. Um, we don't care about that. So this is what's going on here. I got my program. The program is linked to this flux gate here. Okay, And a flux gate basically regulates the amount of RF per tick that is flowing through or to the reactor and from the reactor. So this is really important. So you need to manage the amount going in and the amount going out because you have to feed the reactor power in order for the reactor to create power. It's kind of a weird concept, but that's how it works. Um, here's my other flux gate here. So the modem is attached to the top, very unceremoniously, might I add. Um, and that's attached to this flux gate. And this is the output, okay? so this is taking energy out and it's going back to the core and the top one here is taking energy out of the core okay you can see the arrows pointing out down into here and the energy injector is going to fuel the reactor okay so power in power out and you need to manage the power in and the power out so what's going to happen and I've literally never done this on uh, boop, on a survival world so I'm kind of nervous even though I think it's gonna be fine okay um, so yeah so that's what happens when you fuel it up so now I'm loaded with fuel so that's great the reactors off you can see that my fuel gauge has now reached a hundred percent and uh, the point of this program it's it's twofold first of all it allows you to manually control the flux gates from one location which to me is invaluable you you really can't set up a reactor without being able to see the flux gates um, either like directly next to each other um, along with like the temperature of the reactor so this is a really awesome program um, I wouldn't even bother to set up a reactor if I didn't have something like this because otherwise you'd be running between this one you'd be increasing the RF you'd be decreasing the RF um, and it would just be a total mess so I need to turn the reactor on okay let me see. Yes, so charging. Okay, so that charges really fast. And the energy saturation is rising. There it is. All right, okay, so this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get this to like an optimal operating temperature here, um, which is 50%, 50% um, field strength. You can actually run. 
it, it's good to have it 50% actually energy saturation too, like 50-50, that's what they say that you need to be at. Um, but if you run with way less energy saturation, um, you can really hammer out some RF per tick, um, which is fantastic. So, um, I'm feeding it. Why is this not working? Okay, so this is an example of um, what you don't want to do. Okay. Um, we need to pump some RF per tick out of this thing. So I'm going to jack this up, okay? So this is how it's it's really invaluable, and I'm doing this very nonchalantly um, because, again, these things are way safer than people um, make them out to be as long as you have a good program like this, okay? So we got the temperature rising, which means my RF per tick is rising. I'm almost at 300K right now. Um, I'm going to throw some more, oops, I'm going to throw some more energy at the uh, field strength, okay? So as I input power, the field strength increases. As I decrease power, the field strength decreases, okay? Really, really simple. These things aren't that complicated once you've played with them for a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually crank this um, to 600,000. Okay, our heat is rising really fast. And what I'm going to do is get this thing to about five, um, 500,000, probably... Um, uh, five and a half hundred thousand, five hundred fifty thousand, um, R per tick, and then I'm gonna kind of leave it there. Um, these things burn fuel extremely slowly, so you really don't have to worry about that. Okay, field strength is dropping, okay, because I'm pulling too much power, so I'm gonna jack up that, and I'm gonna actually come back to fifty percent. Okay, so as the field strength drops, this this thing you gotta mess with it. Um, you gotta add more into the containment field, so that's what this is here. We're at about 5,000, 5,000 heat. Again, 8,000's red zone. Um, this program is fantastic because it will actually just shut the whole thing down. Automatically, it's going to stop the reactor if it gets to 8,000 degrees. Um, let me see here. So we got containment field. This is energy saturation is dropping, um, which is fine. I'm just going to keep cranking it up. We're at 6,000. We're, we're still good to go. Um, that's holding steady. You see, that's that's gonna like start there. See, it's, it's dropping now. Okay, so as I feed more power into the containment field, you see how it leveled out like that. 18. So I'm gonna feed more, more. You see that number is adjusting there. 6,000 temperature. 450,000. Oh yeah, baby! This thing is so freaking cool. So awesome. Okay, so we're into a little bit of a red zone here, but that's okay. Um, Actually, I'm going to drop this off a little bit. Okay, so you see the output. I lowered the output and the temperature's dropping, but whatever. I'm going to raise the output again because <laughs> we are going to hammer on. All right, and I'm going to run down here right quick, and I'm going to show you that the temperature is getting really hot. Okay, my containment field is above 50. That's a little bit too high. Energy saturation should be about 50%, um, 6,600. Do, 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 do. I forget what actual number that I was using. I um, guess if I had my phone, I'd be able to tell. All right, so I'm going to dial this back. I'm going to pump more more energy into the containment field. Okay? And way my heat's dropping. And I can actually really crack, crank this thing up now. Because um, the more, the more uh, field strength you have, the more... Or if you can drag out of it, so we're at about 7,000. Um, okay, the beauteous thing about this program is, and we're not going to get too hot, because I know you guys would love to see me blow this place to high heavens. Um, the beautiful thing about this is that it has an automatic mode. <laughs> okay, so once I get here, what this is actually going to do is it's actually going to regulate the reactor automatically to reach the desirable field strength, okay? And if I go back to manual, I'm going to take this out. Okay, I'm going to crank down the field strength, and I'm going to get us to kind of where we want to be. 59, 58, 57. Um, it's going to drop pretty quickly, so I'm going to just help it get to 50%. Okay, and our temperature's fine. It's whatever. Um, bum, bum, bum. We're going to switch to automatic mode. Whoops. Automatic mode. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay, and this is... Um, oh, I need to go to 600. Let me 
me see if I can do this. Nope, I can't. 580, 90, 40, 35, dropping. Okay. 50, 40, 30, add, 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 80, 70, 60, add, 50, 40, add, add. Okay, see how I'm leveling out? 39, 40, 42, take away. Still rising, take away. 84, 85, still rising. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. All right, so the field strength's maintaining. The temperature is going to maintain, because we're on automatic mode here. Um, RF predicts going to drop slightly. I'm going to cut out for just one second, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. I'm actually going to go back into uh, manual mode and make some adjustments because I'm going to try to get it to where I had my um, single player one here. And we're going to go to about 900 and 210. Um, so we're going to up the, or we're going to lower this 200 and do, 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 209. We're going to crank this to 800. Okay. All right. I messed up. That's okay. I'll try again. But anyways, um, so this is why this re this program is really good um, because I jacked it up too much. You actually have to do this um, very slowly and incrementally. Um, and with a program like this, you can't make as big of a jump as I just tried to make. Um, but eventually I will get this thing up to, um, looks like I can get it to like 565,000 um, RF per tick. So this is going to stop. It's going to cool down the reactor. Um, and then once it reaches 2,000 degrees, the program actually automatically starts it back up again. Okay, so you can see that I actually messed up pretty badly, but the program saved me. And so highly recommend this. Um, hopefully this makes it so um, you can make one of these on your server and not really have to worry about it too much, okay? So I'm actually kind of glad I showed that um, just to show you that um, it is perfectly safe. Okay. Whew. All right, um, let me go into one more thing about this um, because this is something that it's hard to find on the interwebs. That, oh, I can't really see it in here. Okay, so the fuel conversion, okay, I'm at like 0 0.07, okay, 7 out of 10,368. As the fuel level decreases in the reactor, um, the element called chaos comes into play. So basically for all the gray area on this bar, anything in gray will represent the chaos element of the reactor. And what actually happens is, is as the fuel drops, the chaos level naturally increases. So out of 100%, whatever percent is not fuel is chaos. Maybe that's a better way to explain it. And so as the reactor becomes more and more chaotic, so to speak, it will start cranking out power more and more and more and more eventually to the point where no program could ever possibly save you um, so the more chaos or the more the fuel burns down the more your reactor is going to start churning out power okay which is really cool um, and which is really why that it's not an entirely set it and forget it block so um, I think most places recommend that 90% is about as far as you can push your reactor um, without the thing just completely exploding. Okay, um, so this is going to get down to um, 2,000 degrees. I am going to mess. Oh, check this out too. These things are really cool. You should probably make these um, advanced energy transceivers. So I have one hooked up to here and into this thing, and the energy infuser will just take a butt ton of power. So this is. Is 70s, 70 some odd million, um, six, about 68 million RF, um, and that will charge <laughs> really quickly. Okay, so that's really awesome. Okay, um, so yeah, this is a really awesome thing, and you should make some. Okay, so 
Um, I think I'm going to cut out and I'm going to let this thing turn back on because I believe it will turn itself back on. Oh, is it on? No, no, it hasn't reached 2000 yet. Um, and then I'll see if I can get it to an optimal temperature and I can show you how um, when it gets to the field strength when it's perfect, it will um, light up in red and energy saturation can just stay wherever the heck it wants and so on and so forth. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. And uh, when I said that I would be right back, I actually ended up uh, waiting about four days. And uh, now I am actually back and uh, done a lot of research about... Actually, I didn't do much research because there's only a certain amount of uh, info available out there. I did a lot of testing and uh, I figured these things out for the most part. I actually have the tutorial um, built and by the time this video comes out, the tutorial will be released um, a day or two afterwards. Um, so I actually am making so much power that I had to drain uh, the entire tier 7 energy storage up there, which was 2.14 trillion power, and I put it in the garbage can behind me um, with those with those energy transceiver things um, because my core filled up and the reactor started to cool down. And since I want to see how far I can push this reactor, I actually just had to dump the power. Um, so I'm filling back up with power as we speak. Um, and I just drained it and I'm already at 3 billion. Um, so it's creating like a billion power like every every 30 or 40 seconds or something like that. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, um, in order for me to continue to push the limits of this reactor, <laughs> which I'm convinced at this point that it has no limits, um, I need to just keep this stupid thing empty because I'm making power so fast. All right, I'm going to end the episode um, because that's really all I have and it's going over time anyways, uh, but I just want to show you how much power, oh, this got a big facelift too, but you'll see that in the next episode how much power I am creating, and it is 1.344 million. And I'm at 6,000 degrees. Um, so I apologize if I have said anything in this video before this point. Um, disclaimer, do not listen to any of it, even if it was true. So I do not want to be responsible for blowing up your base. Um, yeah, I'm at 1.34 million, and uh, as you can see, it's pretty rock solid. Temperature's actually actually decreasing, and it will continue to decrease. However, I am going to continue to push the limits, and uh, hopefully by the time the tutorial comes out, I will push it to over 2 million, which is absolutely insane. So, um, in order to figure out how to do this, you are going to have to watch the tutorial. So, Captain Jack out, and stay poised.